For this project, you'll need drawing paper, colored pencils, and a pencil with an eraser. In this lesson today, we're going to learn about Americana folk art. This term is used to categorize many different images that reflect the charm and nostalgia of America's past. It evokes a sense of patriotism and reflects the history, traditions, folklore, artifacts, and culture of the United States. What are you noticing about this artwork? How are the images similar? If you had to describe Americana artwork to a friend, how would you describe it? And do you think this depicts our culture now? So this is the art project we're going to be doing today. You've seen some examples of Americana folk art and this one is going to have this big representation of the American flag in the background and really this fun patchwork um, kind of patchwork quilt look to the, the landscape in the front and just a really traditional um, typical um, house that would have been kind of stylized, but very typical of the time period. So what you're gonna start with is a pencil, and we're gonna draw in the landscapes. So we're gonna draw in some of kind of this main um, from one corner kind of to the other side of the page. And if you look at the portion of the paper about halfway, this is maybe the bottom fourth of the page, and then I'm going to create just a few more kind of rolling hills in the background. And then I'll kind of do another one here. And I actually think, I wish I'd done this one just a little bit, maybe higher. So the nice thing about kind of sketching this in with pencil first, we can kind of get this right because we're going to use just a pen pencil we're, and we're going to draw a very um, linear straight lined house without using a ruler. If you'd like to use a ruler you can but um, we're going to try doing it without and just practice what it's like to kind of draw straight lines freehand and you can erase them if you need to. So the house is going to go right here and we want to leave the good um, kind of top portion for our flag. I would say that maybe the top a couple of inches. And so our house, we want the roof line to be somewhere about here. So you can draw just a really light line that's gonna eventually be the, the roof of the house. And starting, if you look at this kind of hill you made here, and this, this is gonna be the kind of the valley between these hills that the house is gonna sit in. And so we're gonna draw just a straight line. It's probably just the length of, not quite the length of from your knuckle to the end of your finger. And then if this is the roof line, we want to draw an angle up to our roof line. I might want that to be just a little bit taller for my roof. We can always erase that. And then um, you're going to draw, this is going to end up being like a triangle for this roof, but we're not going to draw this baseline of the triangle. So you're going to draw just this kind of sketch line and you want it to try to line up with this point, even though you're not going to draw that line. And then I'm going to draw this corner Kind of right where that imaginary line would have been. If you want to kind of mark that, you can. And this line is going to be the other side of the house. And I'm just going to do that slightly. 
that was a little angled. I'm gonna make that a little straighter. Okay, so that's our starting point of the house. I'm gonna erase that. And that roof line was a little bit of a guiding line and I didn't end up using it, but that's that's okay. We're going to erase that. And we're gonna draw from the roof line because you wanna draw out a line that um, this portion of the house is gonna be a little bit longer than this face of the house. And so you're gonna draw that out and then have an angled line come down that's going to match this same point. You can kind of draw, this is eventually going to be a line, but you can kind of draw, continue that imaginary line here. This one isn't going to show. And just make sure you feel like that's, if this is too long, you can kind of erase it. But once you have that where you like it, you can connect that. And then I'm going to erase this point up here. So this is going to be your outline of your house. This one I drew a little bit too thick, so I'm going to... Let me do that one. Okay. And then all the next thing you need to do is just extend this line down to wherever it hits on the hillside. And your house might hit differently on the hill hillside placement you put in there, and that's just fine. And then we're going to draw the windows. And on the windows, all I want you to do now is there's a window up here. If this kind of imaginary line was here, there's a window up here that would be on this floor of the house. This is like maybe the attic. And you can make those windows kind of like I did, or you can make them thin, a little bit thinner. But I don't want you to draw any lines in for the window pane. I'll show you why. Oops. Um, later have a fun trick on putting in those window pane lines. So then for this face of the house there's going to be four, four um, windows, two here and two here, and you want them to line up as best you can. Like if there's an imaginary line here, you want them to kind of both end at the same place and try to make them as close to the same size as you can. It's really tricky. And then this down here, this is like the next floor. This is like the first floor of the house, the second floor, maybe the attic. Okay, and remember to draw, we're just sketching it in kind of lightly. And then this face of the house is gonna have six windows. So three on this second floor, three on the first floor. And I, I'm just going to turn my paper a little bit. So again, you're going to kind of imagine this line up here where all three of those windows are going to line up. So you can draw like a little line there, a guiding line. That well, one's not nearly as big as the others. And then you can erase that line. And then the second floor, you can do the same thing if you want, kind of sketch in the guiding line. And I'm trying to make this row of windows directly above the first floor windows. It would have been very symmetrical. And here, that's just a sketch of what we're going to do with the house corner here this is gonna be our big flag section back here and so we really want to make a fairly large um, blue square up here in the corner for that really large star of the flag so I do want to take up a good chunk it's actually um, more of a rectangle it's not really a square. And you can kind of decide if 
it's as big as you want it to be. I had room to do five lines and what the one I'm going to start with is right here the red um, well one of your lines I'm going to start here because I want this line I don't want it to line up directly with the roof line I actually when I was drawing this out I did that the first time and it looks a little funny to have that line in in um, blending in with the roof line so I want to make my line I could even make it straight out from here just make sure wherever you put this stripe it's not going to line up with this roof line even just slightly below it or straight slightly above it will be fine so that's going to be one line and then i'm going to split this section into two remember we want these stripes to be really kind of big and somewhat even if you can without <laughs> measuring so these look about right and then this is a little bit tricky because you're going to kind of draw this line wherever your hillside kind of falls and it's going to go behind the house and try to bring it out this side from the same direction. Now if you want to use a ruler, you certainly can. That can help you quite a bit so that you're going. Just don't draw it very long, I mean very dark. Okay, and then you can do that here for this next line. Just kind of eye, I'm just eyeballing it, I'm not measuring along the side. But I'm going to have one more color um, because I think it looks better to try to end on a red. So this is going to be red and this is going to stay white. This is going to be red. This will be white and I want to have one more red at the bottom so that really this flag really stands out. So this is going to be red again. Okay. The last part we're going to sketch in is the star. And stars are really tricky to draw, but we're going to draw, I'm going to do this on my scratch paper first to show you. We're going to draw a star like this. I find this is the easiest way to keep them somewhat even is this to draw it and then you're going to erase all these center lines and this star is going to be white so we want to sketch this really really lightly these these lines this is kind of dark so that i can erase it easily so sketch it really lightly so you really start with what looks like a triangle without that baseline and then this line crosses and this one really goes straight across and then this line is going to end back at this line okay and it doesn't have to be perfect but I like how that looks and you're going to try to make it fill as much of this space as you can it's going to be really large remember it's this folk art is very stylized big representation of Americana, the American flag. Okay, so I like how that looks. The first tree, I think it's important to, it, if you put it above the red, it's going to not show as much. So I think you want your tree to start on this first landscape line. And I'm just going to draw it really lightly because we really want the color of the tree to be used by coloring pe colored pencils. So I'm going to draw a trunk that goes up um, probably the length, most of my finger from the knuckle to the end. Um, and then this tree, again, it's really stylized. It has just a couple branches. You can put one in the middle if you want. And then this tree is going to have just kind of the... See, I'm going into the red there. I don't want to do that. So my tree needs to be a little shorter. So my tree might go to here. And I want my the top of my tree just to stay. And I'm just drawing kind of the general outline of that tree. And then we can erase some of those landscape lines but you get the idea it's just kind of the general sketch of the tree and I'll show you how we'll do the we're gonna really 
draw in with our colored pencils. So just sketch in kind of the general look of your tree and I think it's easier to have it below that red section. You can put it in the red section if you want, you'll just have to color carefully around that so that the tree shows. The other, there's another tree we can put over here. Again, this is my white section, so I want it to kind of stay here. So I'm going to draw it from, I want the main part of the tree to be up here. And this one um, can be a little bit smaller than the other tree. Again, these are kind of very stylized looking trees. I just have a trunk. And they, they would have been deciduous trees because Colonial, this would have been the East Coast, and they have a lot more trees that lose their leaves in the fall than we do here in the Northwest. Okay, so that can be another tree. You can make that one smaller if you want, whatever you like. All right, we're gonna get started on um, the next phase of coloring in our picture. And I want to show you again the original one that I did that we're working from. And the we're going to kind of sketch in the patchwork look to the landscape. And then we'll start, I'm going to give you a few tips on and tricks on doing a few different techniques on the coloring. And then I'm going to let you work. So taking this first big section we're gonna kind of break it down into different patchwork sections, but we're gonna follow how like the land might slope. And I kind of wish I'd sketch that. Um, I don't have to draw too dark. This one might be a little bit dark, but I'll color that in. Um, and then we're gonna go from kind of section, we're just gonna divide it up. And so, I might kind of pretend this curve goes over here to break this section up a little bit. So I have three sections here, three sections here, three sections here, which is probably good. Um, if you wanted, you could draw another section. This looks pretty big to me over here. It's up to you. And then I'm going to go from this hillside and kind of break this hillside up into a few sections. So I'm going to draw a little line this direction. I'm going to draw maybe two lines this direction, and then I'm going to draw a line that kind of slopes across this whole thing to divide it. So I've got about six sections there. And then I have this hill here that goes behind my tree. I'm just going to divide this into maybe four sections there. And same thing over here. I think I'm just going to go... Four sections there and we'll talk about how to color those in in a little bit but what I wanted to show you is a kind of a cool technique I um, kind of experimented with and it worked out really well I was trying to figure out how to do these windows and show the window panes and to color that really carefully with the white lines is very hard but I found a cool way to do this so the first thing I would suggest is um, for this, I think because we're trying to be really precise with our lines, really making sure your pencils are sharp, if you can keep them sharp as you're coloring. So what I would do first is outline your windows. I'm going to just do a couple of them to start with to show you this technique. Okay, and then if you have a white colored pencil um, they usually come in some color pencil sets. If you don't, I can show you another way to do this. But, um, or you could use a really light, uh, maybe a light gray. And I'm going to show you white. If you draw a line and you can't see it, but you're going to draw two lines down the center of your window, and then you're going to cross, you're going to divide it into... So basically you're dividing it into six sections. So two lines going vertically and two lines going horizontally. And then what you're going to do is just color this over lightly. 
And I kind of like using kind of a circular motion as I'm coloring. But look what's appearing is those lines are appearing. And then I'm starting to just kind of define those, the darker sections by not coloring over the black, the white section too hard. So I'm just kind of darkening. So look how cool that looks. So that's one idea of coloring in your windows. I'll do it one more time is draw two lines down vertically and two lines across horizontally. And then coloring those in with the colored pencil. Because really what they're doing is not only is it putting down some white on your white paper, it's also making, um, you can kind of feel it, you're making indentations into the paper. So if you don't have white, you could draw really light pencil marks that'll put the indentation in and that should work just the same just um, kind of coloring around them a little darker all right so the other part I want to show you is that when we do the coloring of um, the the grass, the patchwork grass, you may, in your set of colored pencils, you may have just your standard colors. Oftentimes you do get two colors of green, depends on how many colored pencils you have, but you usually have a brown, a black, and a yellow. Um, and these are colors I would pull out and make sure you have really sharp tips. And these are the colors we can use for the grass. Now if you have a really fancy, um, I love to use color pencils, so I have lots and lots of color pencils I've collected. So I have lots of different shades of green and brown and th these colors. But this is all you would need to do the different sections. So we're just going to start with one. Pick any section you want, and I'm just going to pick my, um, this is just my green color. And I'm just going to color it in lightly. Because what you're going to do, color pencils work re oops, um, really well, I'm not going to worry about that, really well with shading. And you don't have to worry too much if you go outside the line here a little bit because this is all going to be grass eventually. So you're going to decide each patchwork next to each other, they're going to be a, a variety of light, dark and different shading with different colors. So I'm going to put down my green and I could leave it just green but I'm also going to show you look what happens if I add yellow and I'm not going to color in all of it I'm just going to put a little yellow here and there. Now when you look at it it looks like a yellow green or um, a little bit lighter shade and if I do a regular green right over here, again, I'm using that same green I put down here first. If I do just plain green next to that yellow green, you can notice a difference. Now the other kind of thing you could do with the brown is you can color a section brown And then layer that, I'm going to just show you this look, layer that with a little bit of green. And notice I'm kind of holding my color pencil so I can really lay it flat. So this is going to be a totally different patchwork color look. So as I keep going, I'm going to start getting this, I'm going to show you this one again, this patchwork look and just enjoy how that ends up looking. Yours will look different than mine, of course, and just see how that kind of turns out. Continue coloring, and you can use this as an example if you'd like, but enjoy the process of learning how to layer colors and making your Americana folk art.